Alright guys, we have another lithium battery video to show for you. You guys know that I have a fascination with lithium batteries. I've got an off-grid system built in Goliath with two large lithium batteries and we saw a video a couple months ago where I put a lithium battery in this very trailer that we're standing in to replace the lead acid batteries in that and we did a, a capacity showdown on that to show you how much more reserve capacity the lithium iron phosphate technology has opposed to lead acid sorts of batteries. Well, got another brand of battery. Now this one's a little bit smaller. This is 100 watt, and this is the Watt Cycle battery. Now Watt Cycle reached out to me because they really liked the way I was doing the battery reviews, and they asked if I'd do one on this, and I had a very particular use for this battery. So I said, sure, I would love to do another review, and I can put the battery to use. So really good there. Now, during consultation with them, they told me that the battery charger I had for that 200 amp hour battery, which was a 40 amp charger, would be too much for this battery. So they also provided me with this 20 amp charger, which is the perfect charge rate for this 100 amp hour battery. All right guys, so like I said, this is the Watt Cycle 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. It does have a built in BMS like almost all lithium iron phosphate batteries have. It should have low temperature protection so if it gets below freezing it will stop the charge cycle so you don't do the damage to the lithium iron phosphate cells. It, it's very dangerous to charge them during sub freezing temperatures. And a lot of the really good battery brands on the market will have those protections built in. This one should have it as well. We're going to try to put that to the test a little bit later on. Now, as you can see, this battery is a little bit smaller than the last battery we reviewed. It's 100 amp hour instead of 200 amp hour. It's still 12 volt nominal, just the same. So it will run voltages anywhere between like 10, 10 and a half on up to about 14, 14 and a half. So the max charge voltage on this battery should be about 14.6. It should safely discharge down to around that 10 volt range. We'll find the spec on that in a little bit. Now these battery dimensions is just about 10 and a quarter long, eight and a quarter high, and just over six and a half deep. So it's a small compact package you can fit in many, many places. Now when Watt Cycle sent me this battery, I did a voltage check on it and it was only about 3.4 volts, which should be about 50% charge, which makes sense. Most times you want to store a battery between the 50 and 80% safely for long-term storage. And so that would be where they would put it to ship it as well. Now, before doing this video, I put it on the charger that is supplied and brought it up to full charge. So we're going to check the full battery voltage now that it has rested for about 24 hours since removing it from charge. And then we're going to do a full capacity test on this battery after we go over a couple more specifications. As you can clearly see, this battery has very good solid terminal connections and it even has the nylon strap, make it easy to pick up and carry around. And that's very convenient if you were going to use this in a marine or an RV type installation where you've got to drop it down inside battery compartment boxes and whatnot. Now guys, I do want to tell you that we are here at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway while recording this video and it is bike week outside this trailer. So if you hear an occasional motorcycle or something going on back there, that is why. Okay, so battery specifications, how does it work? So as I stated, this battery should have a 20 amp maximum continuous charge rate going in and it can discharge at 100 amps. 100 amps is that max continuous discharge that the BMS should allow it to handle. If the BMS finds a 14.6 volt or higher, it should automatically disconnect the battery to protect it. And then that protection mode should be released when the battery goes back down to like a 14.2 volt. Likewise, if you try to over discharge this battery, when it gets down to about 9.2 volts, the BMS should automatically disconnect and then not reconnect until it gets up to 10.8 volts. And this battery is light. Like I said, the lithium iron phosphate chemistries have a much lighter weight than the lead acids so the current weight on this battery is 23.15 pounds guys look it's not very heavy at all no struggle whatsoever the battery terminal sizes are m8 so that's good and strong and durable and the manual says that the self discharge rate on this battery should only be about three percent per month which is actually really really good and if a single 100 amp hour battery isn't big enough for your system, you can wire these in series and parallel. You can go 
a maximum of four parallel connections and four series connections max. So you could wire four of these in parallel to give yourself a 12 volt, 400 amp hour battery bank. You could also wire four of them in series to give you a 100 amp hour, 48 volt battery bank. And if you really needed some big power, you could use 16 batteries in total, four in parallel, and then wire four sections of those parallel in series to have a 400 amp hour, 48 volt battery bank. On top of that, this case is IP67 waterproof rated. So that makes it really good for marine applications. A little bit of water gets splashed on it. You're not gonna hurt anything. And it should also be very resistant to corrosion internally because it is a sealed unit. Very good construction would make a really good battery. Now, I wanna check the capacity on it. I wanna see if this thing will really put out a true 100 amps like it says it will. And in order to do that, I bought a new tool that I've never used before. So in the last video when we did a capacity check, we actually used an inverter and a load device and we weren't really checking actual capacity. We were comparing the new battery to the old battery bank with great success. But here, I don't have a load device I need to test and I don't have an inverter handy. So what we're gonna do is use this new tool. I went on Amazon and I bought one of these capacity testers. So there is an inductive heat load in here and a fan, but it's got a digital screen to read out. So it should tell us all of the specifications, the watt usage, the watt hours, and the total capacity of the battery. Now I've never used this before, so I'll be learning this as you're learning it, and we're gonna see how it works. Okay, so just some quick, simple setup. I had to wire my alligator clips to the control board to start with, and there is an AC power adapter. We've gotta plug it in to the wall before we make our connections. Okay, once it's plugged into the wall, the screen turned on, and the first screen shows it all in Chinese. So here you'll see everything is written in Chinese. If I press this button one time, it should make it in a more legible. And then at this point, there's a couple of options we can go through. I think this is the screen that I want to have. Now before hooking to the battery, we've got to make sure that these are both turned down all the way, and then we can make our connections. Okay, both of our connections are made. We're reading 13.3 volts. So now let's turn up the load by turning the rough gauge up. You see the motor is starting to spin and it's showing how many amps we're drawing. Oh, we went too far to the max. Let's turn it back down. So here you can see it's showing how many watts it's pulling how many amps and what the voltage is. So I'm gonna get this to the max and I believe this will only put out 185 watts maximum. Ooh, right there, we're at 184.54. Let me back that down a little bit. 179, let's use this fine tuning one. We'll get that right up to 180. Okay, now if you look, there's also a timer in here. All right, so now let the test begin. Now for right now, we're just gonna let this sit here and test. We did not set any low voltage disconnects within the testing tool, which you are able to do if you were gonna test individual cells. But because this battery already has a BMS in it and it should protect itself when it gets down to that low voltage disconnect threshold, it should disconnect the battery. And at that point, we can see exactly how many watts it used and how many amp hours were used to see if we get the full capacity out of it. This should take quite a few hours. I'm not gonna make you watch a couple hours, so just. So we'll come back as soon as the test is done. Okay guys, if you look here, we are two hours and 22 minutes into our test. We still have 12.5 volts available. We're still drawing 14.4 amps and relatively 180 watts continuous. Now that fluctuates a little bit, a couple of watts, 179, 181, so on and so forth. And I have played with the dials a little bit. So in theory, right about now, we are at 33.3 amp hours used. So we're about one third of the way through this test. And it's actually really late at night. So what I'm gonna do 
is I am going to turn the wattage down on this to where it's almost like a trickle. And I'm going to go to bed and get up in the morning. And if it hasn't concluded the test, I'll turn it back up. So the timeline will be off, but the wattage used, the amp hours used, should still all be accurate. So we're going to do that. Okay, so I've turned it down now. We are drawing 9.94 watts, and we've got 423 point, oh, look, 424 total watt hours used. Again, we're about one third of the way through. We're only drawing 0.76 amp, and you see the voltage has increased because the load has decreased. So our clock is gonna go up a lot faster in comparison to the watt hours, but we'll come back to this in the morning and see where it's at. So it's currently 10 o'clock at night. And if, like I said, if I ran that full test, we are looking at another four hours almost before it would have ended, which would put it at two o'clock in the morning. So this way we can slow it down, come back in the morning, turn it back up if we need to, to finish the test. We'll just see how it does. We're all learning here, not just you. All right, guys, it's about 8.30 the next morning. And you see, we are still running our test. It didn't finish in the middle of the night while I was sleeping, which is a good thing. So now we're gonna turn this back up to the 180 to finish this test up quickly today. And I say quickly, it's still gonna take a while. All right, and there we go. Back up to 14.5 amps. All right, guys, we're getting really close. We are at 95.19 amp hours, 1187.57 watt hours. The test should be concluding pretty soon. Okay, guys, it just turned 99 amp hours. But you can see the voltage is dropping now. We're only down to 11.2, and even the wattage usage has dropped down to 165 a little bit without changing anything. 1233 watt hours. All right, so it looks like we're gonna pass the test. It is currently at 99.99 amp hours. There it goes, 100 amp hours as stated. So it has passed the capacity test. Now let's just see how far it will go. The voltage is steadily dropping. So once it gets to that nine and a half volts, it should shut itself off. All right, guys, it just shut down. You see it is drawing zero amps now. It got down to that 9.5. So we have a total of 101.81 amp hours, 1261.93 watt hours. All right, so now that we know that it has passed the capacity test, I wanna see how this thing is constructed. I've watched a couple of the videos on YouTube of people taking these batteries apart. And I've seen some of the things that are what's considered shoddy build quality and some of the things that are considered good. I've never done this myself. But I think we're going to give it a try. I'm first going to start by using a heat gun and try to heat up the seam here, soften the glue, and see if I can't pry it apart. If that doesn't work, I'll pop out the oscillating tool. And let's see how this thing is built. All right, guys, well, the heat gun seemed to work pretty well. I was able to gently pry that apart. Now we're gonna very carefully open this up to see what's inside. All right, you can see there's some pretty heavy gauge wires going over to the terminals and back down to the BMS. So this unit here on top with all the MOSFETs and diodes, that is the BMS unit. It's what regulates the charge and discharge rates and offers the protection features. The cells will be underneath that. Let's see if we can get the cells out. All 
Hi guys, I finally got it out of the box. That was no easy task. Uh, it's got a metal frame down here at the bottom, which is really good, it's nice construction. And it's got like a two-way tape. So it was stuck to the bottom of that box very, very well. But once I got it loose, just a matter of turning it upside down and I was able to dump it out. Okay guys, now that we've got it open, you can see there are four individual cells in here. They are all connected in series to create the 12 volts. And if you look at the way the bus bars are installed, they're nicely welded on there. You can see where the BMS leads come down and are neatly tied. No loose wires hanging out in here, which is very nice. And they've got insulation and sealant in places to keep everything neat and tidy. There are foam pads on all four sides and the top, so it doesn't rattle around in the box. And this was very stable in the box, I must tell you. There are insulator plates on the outside between the metal frame. And you can see it's also on the inside in between each cell, which is very important so that the cells are not actually touching one another. The metal frame on the top actually has an air gap underneath the BMS. That way it isolates the heat from the BMS from transferring into the battery cells as well. All right guys, in right here is the temperature sensor. So what we're gonna do is pull this off of here and we are gonna test the low temperature disconnect, see if it works. All right guys, right there we've got the QR code on the cell, so we're gonna scan that and see what information we can get from that code. Well, unfortunately, scanning that QR code uh, led to inconclusive results. It said that the, uh, the search could not be found. It's kind of hoping to see whether these are grade A cells, grade B cells, E cells, whatever. Just wanted to know exactly what they were, but it says the search was unconclusive or basically couldn't find anything. So uh, we'll have to look into that a little bit more. Now to do the low temperature disconnect, we are gonna hook it up to the charger. As you see right now, the charger is not connected to the battery and it has a green light on it. When I connect it to the battery, the light should turn red to charge. In theory, if we make this sensor cold and we dip it in some ice water, it should disconnect the charger and stop the charging. Now, some of the channels I've seen, they've got fancier chargers where you can actually see charge rates and everything, and I don't have that, so we're hoping that this is gonna work. All right, as you can see right there, our battery light has turned red, the charger is running. Keep in mind, this battery is in a discharge state after the capacity test, so it needs to be charged up anyways. While it's charging, I'm gonna go and uh, get some ice water and see if we can't make it stop charging. Okay, guys, so hopefully, the idea is when I dip that sensor into this ice cold water, we should see the charger turn itself off. Let's see if it works. Okay guys, and there we go. You see it turned to green, so it disconnected the charging voltage to protect itself. All right guys, so no, I'm a, a bit of a novice at this and uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, but it looks like this battery passed pretty much every test I could throw at it. In my opinion, it could be a good battery. Now we're gonna put it to some long-term use. When I get back home from this trip, I think we're gonna use this battery and hook it up to my power gate opener on the property. And we'll see how it does there operating that gate over a long term. First, I gotta put it back together. And I think it did a good enough job that I can put some sealant around the edge and uh, seal it back up and not have any issues with it. So, guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next time I see you, keep those engines running. All right, a little bit of sealant and use the heat gun to reshape it. It's all back together. Almost as good as new. Not quite.